<laughs> oh, Lordy mercy. Hello, dear friends. How you doing? Shit's getting crazy, y'all. For real. I'm reporting on the news. It's like two or three days behind, you know. Because I have to sit around and think about it. For a little while. But anyway, what I'm talking about today is... All right, we'll start with Melania. Okay. Oh, my God. I swear that woman is a hostage. <laughs> Blink twice for yes, once for no. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, it was nuts. It was completely nuts. Melania went out there like the fucking whore of Babylon in front of the Sphinx. Of all things. In a big white suit and hat. Okay, for any of you brothers and sisters that are familiar or a part of uh, some of the island cultures like Barbados and... Now, I don't know it very well. I've only heard secondhand from friends in passing conversations. But the, the white hat, the man in a white hat, it's other island cultures too, but... I know it's something with Barbados with it. It's that's a bad sign. That's like the devil. That's the symbol of the devil to a lot of African American, um, Haitian maybe, sort of uh, that. And I, and I may be out of line, but I knew a guy from Barbados really closely, and when I lived in New York, he was one of my best friends and mentors, and he was a genius. I love that guy. He was great. Um, and he was from Barbados, and he told me once that the image of a man in a white hat and a white suit is considered the image of the devil in their culture. And in like the indigenous whatever. I don't know exactly. And at first I thought of that, right? But then, but really the first thing before that, the first thing that popped into my head, and it kind of is simultaneously almost, was Belloc. Belloc. From Indiana Jones Part 1. What is it? Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. She was like the female Belloc. The white hat, the white suit. In Egypt. Standing in front of the Sphinx. And then, of course... You know what happened to Belloc? He thought he could tame the power of God and use it for evil. <laughs> Not a good idea, Nazis. He opened the ark. And then his fucking face melted. <laughs> So yeah, that's what it seemed like to me. She was like, I was the first thing word that popped in my head was it was Indiana Jones's voice from Raiders of the Wall Stark when I saw her out there in the front of the Sphinx with that fucking white suit and white hat on it was Belloc. <laughs> She's like the female Belloc. <laughs> and uh, and then they showed another photo op thing of her, and she's got like the fucking Ranger Rick hat on with binoculars looking at some shit. That's like total photo op pictures. Those are not natural pictures. You you walk around with that uh Early uh, 1900s uh, English safari hat circa uh, India. That's what that she was wearing, like a hat like that. Like like the British colonial safari rich prick hat kind of hats they wore like in the 20s when they were going to... In the, in the, in the late 1800s when they were... Uh, when English imperial expansion over India and Africa was... Getting, was getting nuts the way ours in uh, America is in the Middle East. So she was, like, wearing the garb of that shit. Old Empire shit. And, uh... I think it was an image. An image they were trying to put in our zeitgeist. In our unconscious. Like, okay. The official, like, she, well, she basically said, Oh, I can disagree with my husband, but he doesn't listen to me. I'm not a robot. I am not a hostage. That's basically the whole reason she 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 stood out there like the whore of Babylon in front of the Sphinx, 
and the, those sacred sites in the Middle East that are like, and this is just conspiracy theory bullshit I'm talking here. This is just from my imagination and conspiracy theories, and it's probably bullshit. But it's just something, you know, you think about when you, you know, because you look at these kind of things for fun. I think they were possibly, maybe, probably not. Like, they were trying to cast an image to, like, a little tip of the hat. Like, we still got this, right? We're still in control. And now that the age of the woman, the goddess era, has entered, age of Aquarius... You know, they got to throw some, they got to throw the Horror of Babylon, although I like to call, but that's what she reminded me of, the Horror of Babylon. I like to call Sarah Huckabee Sanders the Horror of Babylon, or the Lion Cow. But, um, so they throw her out there in front of the Sphinx, right? That was like symbolic. They were trying to send some kind of symbolic message to the war profiteers and all the little secret society fuckwads that, uh, this is just my conjecture of conspiracy. That it's probably fantasy. I don't even really think it's real. It's just interesting to think about. Uh, that these uh, that was like that was like a nod. That could have been a nod to like all the secret society fuckwads that you know go off in the woods and worship Molot and the skull and bones and all the other bullshit they get up to. Uh, to say yes, that we the empire still has it, even in the age of the goddess. They threw her out. Threw her ass out there as a symbol, right? Uh, and Indiana Jones is one of my absolute favorite. The two archetypal characters from American culture that I modeled myself after and was my absolute heroes was Indiana Jones and Hawkeye Pierce from MASH. My character, I'm always trying to, those are my two greatest heroes from childhood. I wanted to be like Hawkeye Pierce, a mixture of Hawkeye Pierce and Indiana Jones. I'm a huge MASH fan, which is weird. Most people, you know, they're, I'm a huge MASH fan. Like, I have all the action figures and shit. I'm a, I'm a total MASH fan. Anyway. And we move on to Kanye. Oh, dear Lord, heaven save us from the crazy-ass Kanye. So, Jesus. Madness is becoming standard reality for these Trump fuckers. It just really is. Kanye is not a stable, he's not a genius. Uh, he likes to say he's a genius. Um, says his mental shit is not diagnosed. Well, he seems pretty schizoaffective to me. I'm not in any position to make a formal diagnosis, but I'm getting my master's in psychology and I'm a sociologist. And uh, yeah, he's pretty, pretty dead on schizoaffective shit going on with him. And I was close friends. One of my best friends turned out to be a schizoaffective person. And uh, they are more than a handful. They will fuck your shit up six ways from Sunday every time when they're not medicated. It's just inevitable. It's like clockwork, like death and taxes. They will fuck your shit up if they're not medicated. Because they, they get caught in delusions of grandeur, and then they get caught in delusions of the world. And then they get their head all twisted up with ego, and they mistake it for, like, God. And it's just a fucking nightmare, believe me, I've been through it. Schizoaffective people, they're tricky. Which is not to say that there's not hope for them or anything. Um, but yeah, Kanye is fucking schizoaffective. Homeboy is crazier than a shithouse rat, alright? And he's off his meds. And uh, he's not a fucking genius. A genius doesn't get out there and dance around in a fucking Perrier bottle. That's the move of a simp. Genius. Somebody... Uh, Kanye just needs to go away and get on some medication and come back and make some good music again. Because you're way the fuck out there, brother. And you're way the fuck out of line. You don't know your asshole from your elbow. You're fucking delusional. And you're a megalomaniac narcissist. At least that's the behavior you're displaying. You're, I think you're a schizoaffective. And you done went deep down that fucking rabbit hole, brother. So, yeah. You're gonna, if you ever get on some meds and like get your shit together, Kanye, hey, you're gonna look back on this and it's gonna be the most embarrassing thing you've ever done in your whole fucking life. Because you look like a goddamn bitch-made fool. 
kissing Donald Trump's ass. And that's real talk. So, whatever, B. Maybe one day you'll figure out you're fucking insane. And Donald Trump is evil. And it's really that simple. <laughs> Welcome to the real world, motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> It'd be funny if some Kanye, some Yeezy fans get on here. You don't understand. He's a fucking brilliant artist of our generation. Yeah, well, you can eat the peanuts out of my shit. How about that? How's that grab you, sport? Uh, so, yeah. My two cents on what's going on. You can take it or leave it and take it or leave it. You can just take it or leave it. <laughs> Your little strokes there at the end. Okay. Later, guys. <laughs>